Well, hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, March 5th, 2023, and that's right, we're back. It comes out loud, Drag Race, and we are discussing season 15, and in our third uh, kind of discussion recap episode, we are going over episodes number 8, 9, and 10, which in this case happened to be the Lip Sync Lala Perusa Smackdown, the Crystal Ball... And then 50-50's most gag-worthy stars. Not to be confused with the adult movie video awards. Anyways. (laughs) 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 Nothing like turning off our audience right in the first couple of minutes. There we go. (laughs) Hi, everybody. So for those of you that haven't been here before, my apologies for that horrendous opening. My name's Gary, and with me is my (laughs) ever-fabulous co-host... Hello, everyone. It's Damon. <laughs> I'm sorry for that one. Hey, <laughs> that one. we're a bit punchy this this Sunday. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, interesting three episodes. Right. Agreed. Uh, you know, the first one is the all right. Show us what you got. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the part of the gig. You've got to mm-hmm. be able to like move your mouth to the words, move your body. Do some things, uh, mm-hmm. show off what you've got, um, and in some cases, hopefully, you have more and more tricks up your sleeve because you're gonna do it again and again and again and again. again. <laughs> like that's a little dicey, um, mm-hmm. in that case. But I will say, uh, of these last three that left, they were kind of in the lineup as far as I was concerned about, like most likely to leave soon. Um, and and I feel this way quite often when we get to this point, you know, you and I have discussed it over all these years we've been doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the mid-season slump. Like, what else are you going to call it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, That's fair. Somebody got to go. Yeah. <laughs> a few people, actually. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be a competition without it. So very, very true. So with that being said, why don't we jump into our first section of today's show. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. That's right, hunty. So put the pedal to the metal. Uh, These are our overall thoughts on these recent episodes. Uh, And of course, we have our serves, swerves and nerves. So these are our positives, our negatives, and our, well, could be positive, could be negative, but it's pretty extreme. So that being said, uh, Damon, who are you giving serves to out of these most recent episodes? So I'm going to give the the big serve to 200 episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race. It's quite an achievement for a, a show and a platform of this caliber to make it to this level of numbers. Um, Mm -hmm. So uh, we had 200 episodes, which was episode nine, the crystal ball. um, And they did a lot of homages to, you know, previous seasons. And and that kind of worked really well. Let me rephrase. They did a lot of homages to previous seasons and previous, like, queens and such. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of the things kind of fell flat. Um, the, The... Second, like lip sync, the second ball um, outfit, which was like pick a ball from any any season. Yeah, pick a ball from any season, and like half the queens picked like the ball ball. Like, I'm I'm, I'm I am again. I want to see what it actually said, because I feel like right. There, there's something there's there, there's some trickery, some goopery going on in there. I've, I'm actually surprised to this date that things haven't been leaked. Right. Like the NDA is like so formidable, apparently, because shit hasn't been leaked. I was just thinking, like, did nobody take a picture with their cell phone mm-hmm. of like of what that like list looked like of things that you were like making outfits for? Because right. that's how we would know, like how it was described to them. And then they would make a decision based off of that. Right. Yeah. Who knows? It just it just bothers me a little bit that like so many queens picked uh, from certain specific like, you know, a specific ball Mm. when there were so many out there. But that's just me. Um, 
That's fair. Having said that, I did enjoy the episode overall. Um, I enjoyed, you know, the looks. Um, I enjoyed some of the quote unquote drama. I enjoyed some of the the um, fun that was had, and I I loved a lot of the throwback. You know that mm-hmm. I really like. We you know, for example, we actually got a fucking mini challenge this episode. Um, so that. <laughs> well, and according to uh, who said this recently? Was it Jada on Pit Stop? Somebody recently said, "Do you know how many minis never get aired?" Mm, it was it was Jada, and I was Jada. like, "Oh, oh, okay. Let's just spill that tea all over the place. Why don't we?" Like, apparently, they do minis for every goddamn episode. Or, as someone said, multiples in a day. Mm. Which I was like, huh? I was like, okay, that be, that's pretty wild. It's going to be, oh gosh, I would have to have a, a okay, yep, I'm going to have, I may have to like start really scrutinizing editing and such for episodes. Right. As I'm looking at things, because like, usually when they do the mini challenge, Rue talks to them and they're kind of all standing there in their outfits that they wore for the day and then they go quick change to drag or whatever. And then they come back and then later on they're standing in their, whatever they wore for minute challenge episodes. So I'm wondering, right. Oh gosh. But what if they do of... two minis and in one right. of them, you don't have to change at all. Right. And then they just pick whichever one they think's better. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> the production da, 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 da. welcome to the We're conspiracy to theory corner apparently Anyways. yes <laughs> so that was me how about you gary um i want to give recognition where it's due so speaking of the crystal ball a mm-hmm. crystallized quote-unquote trade gown <laughs> now i think honestly i'm giving it that it's a serve but the story of it is a real stretch, like like a like a like a four way stretch fabric, girly. Like she's like, oh, I'm gonna like reinvent Kennedy Davenport's infamous like burned chicken costume, like from hell thing that Willem apparently owns. Um, wow! Like she outright just bought it because I think nice. it came up for auction or something. Uh, Because she wanted to have this piece of Drag Race history, which I found very interesting. But I was like, when I saw the final product, I was like, that doesn't look anything. (laughs) Like the other thing. So there's a part of me that's like, Anitra girl, like, you you did it. But I think, like, you gave the description as a mislead or, like, as an Mm -hmm. intentional, like, you know, oh, no. What is she going to do? Or it was done again it was done as a homage to a past episode kind of moment it was a throwaway line that she gave oh, or yeah. was given yeah. to like bring it back like oh this is this is a reference to something from like a previous season and oh my gosh right look right, at right, how right, right. spleens are <laughs> but anyways i i wanted to, it's a serve because girl mm, yeah. of all it, the outfits yeah that was that was the one that I was most impressed by, and I really did think it looked beautiful. Like I was, yeah, um, I was super impressed in the fact that she got it done in like a day. Right. Like obviously the girl knows how to sew. Yes. But on top I'm of assuming. it, I was like, you got to place all those crystals and jewels like in a couple of places to make that mm-hmm. more. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah. It had idea. to. It it had to. It had to. It had to happen, and. I mean, I'll, I'll give a little bit a tea. The the form of the dress is a simple like trumpet skirt gown. You can find like, six kind of those like all over the place. The V down is probably would have been probably the hardest part because you have to know that where that's going to fall. Um, and it looked like again, this is me trying to like remember the episode it looked like she had the dress in some of the moments when they saw her working on stuff Mm -hmm. she either had the dress done already or she was planning where she was going to put stuff in advance which smart girl right right. Um, so yeah 
but again, I was it was pretty fab. It was pretty fucking fabulous. I did like it. I love the. I, I'm assuming she put something in the bottom of the trumpet to kind of have it. It wasn't quite floating, but to keep it like way down. Well, what I thought was interesting was I was pretty sure I caught in a like one second like snip of her moving on the runway that it had a structure form hoop under it or something. Right. Like I feel like it had must have had something like along. like it had a like a boning hoop with fabric attached to it that was like in this topish beige color Mm -hmm. that I barely caught. Like, cause I was like, huh. And I was like, well, that would probably be really smart though, in order to keep all of the ruffle like in place, but then like shifting and moving. So it doesn't bunch up or like, you know, curl Mm -hmm. under or whatever. So anyways, yeah. Yeah. Someone who has done drag in those big, heavy trumpet skirts, the biggest issue you have is when it catches under your heel as you're walking. Mm. Like, right. It can be, it can, I mean, I've, I've, I've not never fallen, but. Well, I mean, it's already happened this season. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who it was on the runway. They, we never talked about it. You and I, but I remember they cut away from it. Cause I was like, Oh, she's stepping on her. And then like, you know, it was like they didn't they didn't make a big deal of it. So it was obvious in the two runs up and down the runway that one of the times they were like stepping on their very own garment. And I was like, oh, yeah. OK, we're not going to. All right. OK. Guess we'd be a nice. All right. <laughs> uh, speaking of not being nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what you give it a swerve for. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so I have so many thoughts and feelings about the lip sync smackdown are smack dumb, as I wrote down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But my biggest swerve in this moment was the final bit. Okay? So bear what? with me. Okay. Are you talking about where there's three? Yes. And then the one with their name on the ball has to make an ultimate decision? Right. Okay. That okay. part. Okay. That part. I didn't like it. It oh. didn't make sense to me. Oh, it, it made perfect sense to me. I was like, ooh, child, okay. TV production drama. Like that's what that's all that that was. They okay. were like, they was like, they was like, you are now the bitch. We just made you the bitch because you have to save somebody and lip sync against the other one. But I mean, I'm gonna say, but why? But we now you've said why. It's production, it's it's drama, it's all of that shit. I didn't particularly care for it because it didn't make sense in any of the narrative that we have received. I get that there are three queens at the end. But what you could have done, uh-huh. like you should have done, uh-huh. is have a final two lip sync uh-huh. and then let one of those go. Uh-huh. They win. And then you have the two that were actually the lip sync bottoms who had lip synced and failed time and time and time again mm-hmm. to make it onto the finale, the final lip sync, and one of them gets sent home. That's right. where it. That's where it. It cuts for me, right? Because every single every single lip sync up until that point had been a here's a winner, here's a loser, right. here's a winner, here's a loser. I, I completely agree with you, David. I thought that's what was going to happen. I was yeah. completely thrilled when they were like, okay. And now, like, and I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, you shady, shady, shady motherfuckers. Like, mm-hmm. like, make her save someone intentionally and then send the other one home. Now, I will say this. Anitra played the game of all games and was like, I will save the one that I'm supposed to murder. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. it, because most likely that's what they want to happen, mm-hmm. and I'm not doing that. Right. So I mean, I mean it, be... it, it's no bed de la creme writing your name on a lipstick like stunt. Yeah, it's not that masterful of a move. It was just like nope. It was something, and I will give it that prop. That I mean, and Anisha even talked about it. Like, I'm not gonna send her. I'm not gonna like send her. I will send her home. She will die. Like she didn't say it like that, but there was there was in her in her <laughs> confessional, she pretty much like said, "There's no contest here. Right, if right, I lip sync right, against right. Spice, there is absolutely no contest." 
it is a deft slay. Like... Right, right. <laughs> By the code of the honor of the Klingons, this will not be an honorable death. Therefore, you right. will be saved at this moment. Right. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, Mama. Yeah. No, like, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I will give it that props. But for me, it just it again, it, it was a slur for me. It just I. Yeah, that's fair. Because, like I said, it it went against the what we have been go- dealing with this whole episode. Mm, yeah, but it, it, it was a bit of a left field kind of moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah, there there's that. There's that. And you? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. Well, I got two things. Um, so I'll start with the latter one first. Child. I get that Ru- that RuPaul's Drag Race, like, it has her name on it. it- it's her show. I get that. Mm-hmm. This, like, using it as a platform to promote your shit, now it's just cringy. Mm-hmm. So that Ru cheerleader cowgirl mess of an outfit mama that was a no that was just a no it's a no it's a no it's a no i heard willem talk about how it was a direct ripoff of another queen's outfit and alaska and willem like debated this on their podcast and and willem was like no pull up the photo like we did it in a bar i made them show that i know where this came from She's like, classically, Mamaru has time and again stolen girls' looks, like taken it and said, Dizaldi, I want that. Something like that. She's mm. like, and she's like, and you could say it's an homage, you could say whatever you want. She goes, but it's someone else's look. End of story. I don't care if it's someone I, else's look. It didn't look good. Like, I no. just didn't care for it. I just, oh God. Okay. So, So that happened in the Crystal Ball episode. It was two hundred episode. I get, I get it, I get it. Right? Like Rue is. No, I can't even say that now. Rue, mm, nope, can't say that either. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> wow! Just <laughs> so much editing going on over on your end there. <laughs> I mean, and, and don't New get me Paul wrong. Has... Like, I have, I have two, th- I have two thoughts just to load in this one segment. Hated the outfit and the dance. That little, like, that was the most ridiculous little, like, musical number in the history of the entire franchise. I was like, right. "Boo boo to fool." Mm-mm. No, like, ma'am. Like, so RuPaul is where's the gong? The the the, you know creator of the franchise and I get it that she deserves some, you know, love and and fun with this thing. I hated the outfit. Absolutely. It came out and I was like, what the fuck is she wearing? Right. Like, what is this for? And I noticed, I think, I think they, she came out with the dancer. I don't know. There was something, I think, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's been, it's been a minute, (laughs) whatever. It just felt so awkward. And then we had her perform this song that had nothing to do with the fact that we were in 200 episodes. It was cakes and candy. It was cake and candy. But, it was but, a, it was a. But there was a celebratory 200 cake. Don't you get it? That was the tie in. <laughs> so for everyone that's not watching this online the look that david has given me <laughs> oh my god no i mean that was that was that was I mean, literally the, the tie-in was that yeah. they had what appeared to be a fake ass cake it was fake as fuck and <laughs> on a cart uh-huh yeah it mm. again but you know, if she had done like um like the theme, like Star Trek Engines or something like that, or done mm-hmm. uh uh cover girl or done something kind of like like from her, you know, again, throwing back to like some of those 
older episodes or throw me back to like a You mean a like song actually to... commit and do something like that people want to see? Like a mega mix of your greatest hits over the right. past? Like, anyways. Right. Right. Never mind. Right, 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 right. Why right, would you right. want to do that? that? Would, why would you ever want to do that? Boo. Production. <clears throat> staff. <laughs> so it just, again, I, it just, it was yet another le- like left ball curve or whatever you want to find. I don't know sports. Um, it was just one of those like moments where it felt like we're pushing this in for the sake of pushing it in. Yeah. Where it could have been a wonderful moment to like homage the the 200th episode, the 200, you know, 199 episodes before. Right. And, of, and I feel like there wasn't that much thought put into it. And that's right. really disappointing. I mean, like, we got a big production when we got to 100 queens. Mm-hmm. But for 200 episodes, eh, let's roll out a fake cake. Let's write, uh, oh, right. Rue's got this song called Cake and Candy, which is boring AF. And we're just going to, like, have her do a little, like, scoop. Shimmy. Yeah. Ugh. Side step. Anyways, yeah. So that's a step to the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and my, and I mean, my swerve overall was just the ball, meh, production. I just feel like for it being the crystal ball and it being two hundred episodes, I was like, what mm-hmm. is this? Like this just felt so lackluster. And on mm-hmm. top of it. Hardly anybody impressed me with their outfits. Like, it's crystals. Like, I'm sorry. Did Mistress have a look that was well put together? Yes. Yes. However, Mm -hmm. it just was not living up to what I would have expected. Right. And I think it's really production's fault because I I really do think they didn't give them very much time. I mean... I'm going to be uh, brave, <laughs> yet vulnerable, and I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say, look at what Sasha Colby's wearing. Mm-hmm. Two strips of fabric, some fucking glittered, like, twigs on her arms, a big-ass, like, afro, like, you know, hair thing, and a bunch of applique she got covering up her titties. I mean, like... And she did she deserve to win? Yeah. Like, I don't mind her winning. Like, that's that's not my squibble. But, like... That's what she could put together with the time that she had. Like that's the, right. that's the part that pisses me off is that's why I was so surprised that Nietzsche pulled off what she did. But as you very well said, it's not that difficult to make a yeah. column gown, you know, with a, with a trumpet skirt thing. So I'm just like, like if yeah. you've given them like two or three days, because as Raja said in fashion photo review, she's like, if you're going to do it right, it's going to take you a week of mm-hmm. watching TV and putting stone after stone after stone after stone after rhinestone after gem. Like, it's going to take mm-hmm. time to do it and to do it right. Yeah. And that's why I think it was a big swerve because I was like, you did not give the girls time. It was yes. just like kind of hobbledy gobbledy. And, yes. and I'm like, I, and, you know, I like, again, that would have been like the tea. If they had done a, like, this is the ball challenge. This is, you know, we're going to give you the ball challenge. In honor of our 200th episode, we're going to give you twice as much time to, like, give us something gag worthy. Give or, me something right. that I can, like, like, I if I give you the time, right. I want you to give me something right. amazing. And, and what about, like, we were talking uh, in the pre-show, spoiler, uh, uh-huh. About like you know the return of queens. What if they had brought back the previous contestants and divided them up and was like, you get a, an extra pair of hands mm-hmm. to help you, like right do this thing or whatever, and right. they don't really get to have any input. They are literally just there to execute. Like sit there and stone a gown, right. or sit there right. and glue some shit together. Right. Like yes, absolutely. Like I could have seen something big, like something bigger. Yeah. It, it needed to be bigger. This is the 200th episode. We knew it was the 200th episode because we kept fucking talking about it the whole fucking time. <laughs> so, and I know this is going against what I talked about earlier, but like, it needed to be bigger than it was. Yeah, it it was for so for me the whole thing was just kind of a big swerve. I was like, eh. yeah, yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's disappointing. Anyways, uh, 
nerve. This is interesting to me because I think I know which direction you're going, but I'm not sure, Damon, what you, what you give a nerve for. So I put down the Love Carney interview and how dare they put these queens against the wacky, like out of the ball, like out of the ballpark, like random ass personality that is Love Carney. But you know that was the whole intention, like, right? That I, was the that was the gang. That was yes, the oh, you think I this was, is going to be an easy interview? Hell no. to the no! Right. Whereas you put some again, you so the 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 celebrities were Frankie Grande, Charo, and Love Connie. Mm-hmm. So Frankie Grande, gay AF. You know, kind of, you know, a little wild, but, you know, eh, you know, whatever. He's been on Big Brother. He's getting married. He's gotten married, blah, 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 blah. Yay for him. Charo, the main issue that which we saw mm-hmm. is we're not going to understand what she says. The, the interviewee is not going to understand what she says. Right. But, you know, that's her personality. That's her, you know, language. That's what she does. That's how she is. Right. And... And then, but then you put Love Connie on there, Mm -hmm. and she's just out there. This is because it's not a real. And and the 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 thing that I had, the main thing I had was she's. This is a character. Mm -hmm. We're interviewing a character, and that's where the difference kind of falls for me. But is it Charo a character? In a sense, yes. I knew that was someone was going to say. In a sense, (laughs) yes. (laughs) <laughs> but to me, there's a, we know that we, we, we've had years and years of the Charo character. Mm-hmm. We know they're like synonymous. Love Connie. Again, I don't know how long she's been doing this, but we've seen her a few times on the show. Mm-hmm. And again, it's wacky, zany, out there kind of moment. Getting that big of a personality to sit down and have like an interview with when they're like, I I was listening to that interview and I was kind of like, what the fuck are you all talking about? Like, I don't get where this is going. I don't know. The only one that had a moment to like give something was Lux in the, in the golf cart. Mm. And that was only because she was able to lob a few things out there that allowed us to, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So because there was the rival thing and then there was the whole, which I didn't know, that she was the the actor that plays Love Connie. He was the actor. He was in um, Legally Blonde. He was mm-hmm. the gay hairdresser. I didn't know that was him. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, right, right. <laughs> that's fun to know. But again, it just felt... Like, how dare they, (laughs) first of all, how dare you, Um, how dare they give this big a personality to these queens to try and wrangle. But on the flip of that, Mm -hmm. and I'll get, I give, I give, I'll give you your, your, I'll give it to you. I'll give you this one. I'll give it to you. That's kind of, that's probably the point. Because the three people that were with Connie, and let me just pull up my notes here. Were boop, 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 were Lux, Mistress, and Selena, mm-hmm. three of, if not the biggest personalities on the show. Mm-hmm. Nah, I think the interview was was more a test of improv. Fair than anything. Like Fair. yes, technically it's an interview. But either you can play or you can't. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, you get steamrolled. Which is what happened. Right. Often. Yeah. And that's why I think, like, I think it was all intentional. It was, I mean, let's go back to the first, like, very first uh, double episode, right? Or whatever, where, you know, Rue is like, you know, I need you to ride this motorcycle and we're going to turn on this, like, mega fan and try mm-hmm. to blow your weave off. Like, that's what mm-hmm. this whole fucking season is. Like, these, this whole series is just, like, 
Like, I mean, the only thing they haven't done at this point is paintball guns. Probably because they get hurt or some bullshit. Um, you know, I mean, it's like every. I mean, the, the whole intention is to like throw them off their game. They want to mm-hmm. see how quickly and how well they can pivot and play, because life is unpredictable. It is mm-hmm. un- unfair, quote unquote. And either you rise to it or you don't. Right. I'm not defending production. I just think like i i personally didn't have that much of an issue and of the three of them love connie is the one i would want to do the interview with because i'm like bitch be cray cray this could be wild just true like it, true, it's true. it's a uh bucking bronco mm-hmm. hope you did your kegels girl grab grab hold <laughs> hold on tight yeah. hold on tight fellas it's yeah. gonna be a bumpy ride yeah um uh, what about you um, so I, uh, I'm going to start with the positive first. So I have a positive nerve. Sasha got the brief for mm. the, for the ball runway of all the bitches. This bitch got it. Yeah. Like she came out. Now I don't think her race jumpsuit inspired look was that fantastic, mm-hmm. but in comparison, I really liked it. Right. So I was like, she gets the check. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I feel like she, you know, consistently, you know, what, what is what is it that Alyssa likes to say? Um, it was clean. It was presentable. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like there were yeah. no flaws. Yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. so I really appreciated that. And with what she had. I was like, okay, so Sasha's going to give us body, but she fucking looks good. So uh-huh. that's what you get. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. So, exactly. um, so I was like, good for Sasha. That was, that was nerve. <laughs> um, <sighs> Uh-oh. Here we go. First of all, I should really have three things. I'm going to start with this first. The, the night of a thousand blank. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Stop it right now. Don't you ever do that again. I'm telling you right now, World of Wonder production. So help me. Like, y'all need to be tased in the balls. We're done. No more. This shit is dumb AF. And it always turns into a nightmare to watch on screen. Now that I've said my piece. So here's here's the nerve. Mistress, with your Beyonce what? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I did not like it. Did not like it. Did not care for it. Was not impressed. I mean, <laughs> it was ugly. Girl. <laughs> and the very first time we ever see you with quote unquote puppets is the 10th episode. I was like, who did you borrow them from? You're not James Mansfield. Like, I just... It was messy. Messy. Messy, 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 messy. I have... It looked bad. uh, Opinions. So there's... So, okay. I I feel you on the Night of a Thousands, whatever. (laughs) Only because... There's only so many people you can do that with. If you're going to do it, do it in the very first episode when you have the most queens. Right. So you get the most looks or the most controversy because seven of the queens all wear the same fucking t- style of outfit. Kimono. Thank you. Kimono gate. Kimono gate. Or amp it up and tell them with all the queens present, we're doing a night of a thousand Beyonce's and you all have to present three Beyonce looks. Live up to the name. That is yeah. hype. That is insanity. People would have lost their minds because that would have been 48 motherfucking looks of Beyonce one after another, after another, after another. And they would have gotten two seconds a piece on the runway. Blip, 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 blip. Like just to see that shit like go so quickly, something. But this was ridiculous. Right. And I'm not even I like, and I realize this is controversial yet brave. Like I, I am not a fan of Beyonce. 
I also don't hate Beyonce. I think Beyonce is a person, and I know that Bay is Queen God, and I appreciate all that. Yeah. But like, it's just not my thing, and I'm not worried about it. I'm That's living okay. my life. She living her life with way more money than I have. So you know, so be it. So be it. But I was just like, this is embarrassing. Like, I don't understand why it's, it's happening just... at this point in the season. It was. It was just bad. Just bad. How do I? How do I put this? It sucks because. Like you said, we're not doing it the full justice it deserves. Mm. If you had said, I don't think, okay. I don't need Night of a Thousand. Like, <laughs> eliminate like that. Right, right. Beyonce, you don't. Just give it another name. Give us something where we're not like having this like, you know, Madonna Holic, you know, something, something, you know, something that works that gives you the <laughs> idea of like these are we're going to be giving you the interpretations of, of these people's looks. Wait, I just had this well ass thought. What if they called it Beyond Seance? Mm. And it's Beyonce inspired seance looks. Mm. Girl, that would have been so fucking weird and wild. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, anyways. Nice. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, I get what you mean. Like, it 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 doesn't live up to the name. No, oh, yeah. Because no. at this point, we had eight queens and we got eight looks, and that's great. I'm glad we got eight, you know, different looks. Hallelujah, in a sense. Um, yeah. But I I just it makes sense when there's more queens to give us more looks. You have the possibility of a a kimono gate again which was kind of you know yeah well and i also have a problem with like queens just picking random photos like beyonce's been around for decades now so it's like she's worn what a thousand outfits i would like, have loved so like people just yeah. pull these random esoteric like she wore this in milan in 2003 at the and i'm like what I'm like, that's not a look that people know. I don't know yeah. that. And I don't even like, follow there's a, her. Like, uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, again, there's a, like, I want something, if, if you're going to do something along these lines, mm. I would have done, like, something from one of her videos. I would have done, like, mm. a, like, for me, Grant, probably, I wouldn't be on the show ever. But, like, I would have done, like, the, the, um, bills, bills, bills look with like the silver and the like pink and stuff. Like it would have been kind of fun. Like a, something from like a video where we've seen it enough times. Right. Right, right. Now it would have been awful if someone had done the simple black, you know, um, jumps, um, bathing suit from um, single, single lady. ladies. Right. But it could have been done. But that's kind of where my head goes when I think of something like this. I think of something – I want something that screams Beyonce. But – Her her renaissance mm – -hmm. I mean, although I don't know if that was out by the time they did this. That's a good thought. But, like, um, her lemonade, the yellow, like, big, you know, fluff, you know, fabric-y, like, drapey bullshit, like, thing that – I'm surprised we didn't see that. I just realized, actually, it would have been great if they made them all wear the same outfit and tell them, you all have to do your your version of the single ladies leotard. Mm. Because then eight of them lined up side by side wearing the exact same outfit. It's like a little black dress. Who, yeah. could, do, who could do it right? Who could do it best? Right. That is competition. Oh, that's right. This isn't really a competition. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That being right. said, are you ready to move on to our next segment? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, children, this time's for the snaps and the eye rolls, aka the hits and the misses. What we think were the highs and the lows of these particular episodes. The things that stood out to us that we haven't already given special recognition for. So, when it comes to snaps, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Um, whew, sorry. 
Um, yeah, this is really easy. <laughs> um, Sashi is the GOAT. Greatest of all time. Point play, period. Like, I don't think we really need to say much else than that. Actually, I will. Um, <laughs> like, I just, I, I was floored these episodes by Sasha. Sasha has done the two in a row wins. Mm-hmm. Um, she's now on her third win. Mm-hmm. Kudos to her. And she's presenting a lot of good positive positivity and energy. And that's what I'm kind of loving for her. Mm-hmm. She's not, she, she's uh, jokey and funny mm-hmm. and, and catty when she wants to be or needs mm-hmm. to be. There was that moment when she had just won her second win, where she kind of said like, you know, maybe you all should like something. It was something, I forget what she was talking about, but like mm-hmm. it just worked. It was just funny and it worked and everyone kind of laughed at it. And, but she also, to be blunt, is putting her money where her mouth is. Mm-hmm. Like she's not been. I don't want to say she's. I don't want to say she's been relying on the same stuff. She has given us something different each episode. Something, something, you know, fun and original. Mm-hmm. And her, she knows herself, and she knows her what she can do, and she's been rising to challenges that, you know. I don't think other, uh, some of the other queens are doing it. I loved her moment in this last episode when she was with Charo and she literally threw the cards away. It let us, mm-hmm. like Michelle, I think, talked about it. It let us in on, like, fuck this shit. We're just going to have fun. Like, and, and they did. And they got into it. And that's where, again, I don't think other queens would have realized that's what you could do. Mm-hmm. You know... Malaysia, love you, honey. But when you were there with Frankie, it literally, I noticed the switch immediately. You weren't, he, you weren't in there to like interview him. He was there to interview you. And it became apparent very quickly. Right. He, he took lead. But I think he, he was so graceful with her mm-hmm. that he didn't make her look bad. Right. He did take the lead. And I think that was maybe because she wasn't able to do anything or she was, you know, I don't, we, again, we didn't see everything. Um, but I feel like there's a possibility that her nerves got the best of her and she just, either she clammed up or she didn't know how to move forward with this. Cause, and I will own mm-hmm. as someone who has watched food network and, and all these other shows a long time, um, interviews and stuff with food are hard to do. Right. They have always been hard to do. Um, well, I, I I agree they are hard to do. They are harder if you're not a food person. Right. So, like, Malaysia doesn't strike me as a person who cooks a lot in the kitchen. Right. And that's where I was like, you weren't, you weren't there. Like, you weren't keeping... Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. like Frankie said something about, oh, like, you know, you've made your square or whatever. Uh-huh. Totally a moment yeah. you could have replied and like, you know, did something fun and be like, well, I like to be I like to be, a you know, a shape. I like corners or, you know, I want, you know, I want to be, you know, something non-traditional or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, OK. So, oh, yeah, we're just going to let that go. And yeah. there we go. And yeah. we're moving on. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So, again. Sasha, amazing. Love her. Um, yeah, I think it goes without saying mm-hmm. she's top four. Yeah. yeah. I think that's fair. What about you? What are your snaps? Um, so I want to give snaps to Selena S. Titties. I mm-hmm. think she is the comeback queen. And right. I'm saying that specifically because she is – I know she's on a journey. <laughs> she's, mm-hmm. she's having the feels a lot recently. Right. But she's really proving that she is a competitor. Like she is oh. a queen. Um, I keep going back a little bit and thinking about that satin crystal dress. Mm-hmm. And all I hear everyone say is, oh, girl, never pick satin. It's horrible. It puckers, blah, blah, blah. 
And it occurred to me, having seen the dress, I was like, you could have done that exact same dress with mm-hmm. the satin and had made one key change. Mm-hmm. And this is provided you had enough fabric. Mm-hmm. And time. <laughs> All right, and time. Um, but it was simply a sewing thing that she could have pleated it on the horizontal. Mm-hmm. And basically made lines from left to right in between all of the crystal like uh, columns or whatever you want to call them that went mm-hmm, up and mm-hmm. down on the vertical. And kind of made look like rouging. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. you see that in I've... velvet. Mm-hmm. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I was like, if you had done that with the entire gown from top to bottom, you might have fucking won. Because it would have looked like something else. Like still right. look like that, but look like something so much more elevated. And I'm not critiquing her. I'm just saying like, it, it, and this is the thing where I feel bad for her. It's like, she's on the cusp, but she's not it. It's mm-hmm. like, it's almost kind of like, um, she needs more bake time. <laughs> I don't know right, how right, else right, to right, say right, it. Right, right, like, right. I like, I'm like, I don't think she's gonna necessarily make top four, but maybe she better be back for an All Stars because she has tons of personality. She's got mm-hmm. charisma, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and like she has a unique kind of like aesthetic and look about her. Yeah. And so I, I'm like, I want to see more from her. I just don't know or see if it's gonna happen in this um, right. particular season. But, like, I call her the comeback queen because, you know, she has lip synced and sent girls home. And so right. she's kind of becoming the assassin of the season. Right. Um, I, now, to be fair, I don't know if she could compete against Sasha. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you know. I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a magic to her. Mm-hmm. And I will own, in the beginning, I was not a fan of her. I was not. I will. I will own. I was yeah. not a big fan of her. She, she was, was a little. She was a little much. She was. Yeah. And, she was loud. And she's <laughs> she's grown on me in in recent episodes. And I think because what we're seeing is that fight. We're seeing that fighter. We're seeing someone that wants to be here. Right. And is trying their damnedest to be here. Yeah. And um. I personally liked the gown. Yeah, I mean, I liked it when she came out. But again, I we, get it. we're in the second half of the season. And now is when the nitpicking is really going to come into play. Right. And the, the main issue was like it was the wrong fabric, essentially wrong fabric choice. And I was kind of like, well, it seems she knows what she's doing because she does know how to sew. We, we saw that. We've seen mm-hmm. that already. So it may have just been, again, a misstep Mm -hmm. where I thought I could work with this fabric and get it to do what I needed to do. It it didn't. So I'm kind of kind of screwed because, again, we don't have time. Yeah. 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 Um, And and the hair twist was was not the greatest either. I'll just own that, too. But again, um, it it worked. Did it meet the like? challenge the dripping the crystal mm, not really but it looked really good and considering she used a complicated fabric and did something with that in the amount of time that they had i think there should be props to that too i just realized another thing she could have done was potentially and this would have probably looked a little strange at first if she had taken those crystal like uh bands and mm-hmm. had like wrapped them around her bicep mm-hmm. and then had like crystals hanging down off of them kind of dripping yeah. and had taken that satin material and made gloves mm-hmm. to the elbow. Right. To elevate it like a little yeah. more in terms of like, you know, something that's uh, not haute couture, but like more elegant. Yeah. Um, I would have liked that. Yeah. And are done a bigger kind of necklace or something along those lines with the, mm-hmm. the whatever that is and done some uh, uh, 
fabric that kind of came back as a cape. Oh, uh, I, yeah. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized that she had made a necklace applique of those crystals, like in a um, chevron, like crisscross. Mm -hmm. That would have been pretty cool. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's. it's I, I, I think we're we're playing. Uh, what do you call that? Sideline quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. <laughs> I think we're able to do that because what we don't know is right is the factor. I, I think maybe time really was the key bullshit thing that they gave them not much of. Yeah. So, but anyways, I I mean I think she just really, mm -hmm. she has the passion, she has talent. Right. Yeah. It, it's just you know it's not all necessarily coming together. But anyways. Yeah, I want her to. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I. I feel she's going to do well. Yeah. And the fact that um, Sasha has given props to her mm -hmm. and even said, I don't know if it was on the show or on a different podcast. I think it may have been on tech. Where she Art. said, I actually lost an award to her because Selena has a show of her own and her show beat out mine. I think that was on the show. Yeah. Are are untucked one or the other? Yeah, but the, but the fact that like Sasha is you know recognizing what the time that she's put in and the talent and all that kind of stuff. I mean that's right. that's really huge. So that being said, <laughs> <laughs> hold on to yourselves. Uh, dun, dun. Now it's time for eye rolls. Be careful. I don't want them popping out your head. Like. Ooh. <laughs> I should put my sunglasses on. <laughs> Who you give it eye rolls to, David? Um, so I've got two things here. In my eye, sorry. Anyway, um, Lucy's delusion. Mm. We talked about this, I think, pre-show, um, but um, I feel that there is. A, like you said, there's a narrative going on where mm -hmm. she is out of touch with what is being seen of her. Right. And I just, this last episode was a perfect example of that, um, where she's ta tapping Mistress on the shoulder because Marsha's talking about how um, she thought she could have been in the, she should have been in the top. And I get it. It's, it's not quote unquote fair that they were hitting, you know, knocking you about having your complaint, but there was a major difference. And that difference is Marsha wasn't like, I'm pissed. I don't get why I didn't make it in the bot or in the top. Nah, 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 mm -hmm. which is the narrative we're getting production. Mm -hmm. She just kind of said it. You in untucked on the couch with poor people got there with the just the safe queens. Mm -hmm. Then when other queens got there, made a point to say it and then afterwards said it. Mm -hmm. So like you had you had a. It just felt very out of again out of touch like you don't understand what's going on what's being what is being portrayed of you right and you know you, you said what you said it's out there it was recorded and now it's out there for production to use mm -hmm. so here you go and i love you lucy i've i've enjoyed your looks for the most part on the show and I've loved what you've done, but you are one of my like top contenders. But I feel as though our fear is though you're not long for this season mm. um, because you're becoming you're coming unraveled. Well, you're turning into a caricature, right? And and that is my bigger concern is that like, <sighs> yeah. I just haven't been able to fully discern where the real Lucy is. Right. Because okay. either the real Lucy is a competitor, but speaks her feelings nonstop. Mm-hmm. Or 
you are doing something for the cameras, but it is definitely not working for you. Right. So that part. Yeah. So that's one. Our second one is I put down humanizing production. Okay. And it's this trend that I've seen, and it's happened recently in this episode. Two queens, Lux and Mistress, had these moments of, again, showing another side of them that humanized them. Because Lux, up until now, has been this, again, delus- kind of a delusion about like how amazing she is and her confidence and blah, blah, blah. And she's in this episode... And the like, I noticed it in Untucked. The first, like, they're talking about it, and you see her kind of talking, and they start panning to other queens, and they're kind of like, "Oh, here she goes again!" Like the looks on their faces are kind of that feeling. Mm-hmm. And then we suddenly, again, ten episodes in, we're now getting a call from home or a video from home, and it just happens to be Lux's family. Yeah, that felt so odd to me in this particular Untucked. I was like... Right. It's the 10th episode in. Why are we doing this now? Like, are we going to do this for the rest of the season with the queens that are remaining? Right. And I don't think they are. Yeah. I think think it's just going to be weird. Yeah. It just feels out of place. It felt out of place. It felt disjointed. And... Did we get like the tears and stuff? Yes, absolutely. Because that's you know we 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 learn again from the production humanizing moment, and and this is me and 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 maybe I need to watch the episode again. But it felt to me like Lux was not talking to the queens; she was talking to the camera. Mm. Like that's just me, mm. and I'll look at the episode again. But I felt this moment. There's a moment where she's talking. After after the video aired, and it looks like she's looking at the camera and kind of presenting her lines. Which, again, if that's the case, we know that's how it is. She's production. Maybe this was the second take. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. So there's that. Um, hmm. And on the flip of that, there's also with Mistress. We had this moment, obviously, where her confidence was was struck down by this episode she knew she was going to be in the bottom she had a feeling she wasn't going to be safe she had a feeling it was going to be her and and malaysia in the bottom Mm -hmm. which would have made sense because we had that whole drama a couple of weeks ago with them too and she was saying these things and she was getting up in her feelings but she was also holding them back and put trying to like focus them Mm -hmm. to like not go you know, I think she was trying not to cry. Um, mm-hmm. And that they, they, again, camera right on her, having these moments, she's talking to things, and it feels like, again, it felt like she wasn't talking to the room. Mm. She was talking to the camera. Right. So, I, I, of all the queens that have been having these moments, it kind of feels... I don't want to say force, but we're getting a very like heavy humanized production right. vibe, and I do not like it. That's fair. I'm gonna to have to go back and watch Untucked again. I think I do too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that, hold on. Let me look at this. Oh, you already trying to say it. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, but I've already had my say of it. Uh, I'm giving eye rolls for Night of a Thousand Bays. Mm-hmm. Night of a Thousand Beyonce's. Yeah. It, it's dumb. It's dumb. I don't even, like, do I even, have, I'm like, <sighs> I'm trying to think if I have a, oh, this, this might work. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just bad. It's just bad. It just feels like, Again, I know we had this conversation before. It it it's not reaching the level that it needs to reach. No, it's it, not it, they're dropping the ball. Right. Period. The crystal mm-hmm. ball, the two hundred episode, they dropped the ball, and then this episode, Night of a Thousand Beyonces, 
they drop the ball. I don't know what the hell they're doing. It's just not. It's just not as good. Hmm. I'm trying to pull. Sorry, um, don't mind me. I'm looking at the. Um... Nope, they don't do it on the. Um, they don't do it on Wikipedia. I wonder if they do it on the wiki. If they tell you what the the next episode. Numbers... No, 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 no. If they tell you what the the Beyonce looks they pulled from. What oh, they from. that I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to look really quickly because it does kind of feel. Um, out of place. What is the? Oh, there it is. No, they don't. Yeah, no. It's just it was it was poopy pants. That's why it gets an eye roll. Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, it, it just it. I want them to change it up. I want them to do something else. We've gotten a thousand RuPaul's. We've gotten a thousand Michelle Visage's. We've got a thousand beyond, um, Madonna's. What else other ones have they done? I think those are the three ones that I remember. They did the Madonna part two. Um, or take two, if I'm remembering. Mm-hmm. They did Lady Gaga. Yeah, but I don't know if they called it Night of a Thousand Lady Gagas. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It's it's the same aesthetic concept. <laughs> Just stop okay. it. Just stop it. Just stop it. Just stop it. No more. <laughs> speaking of no more that's pretty much the episode there are plenty of ways to contact us so you can send us an email comes at gmail.com you can visit the blog comes out loud.com you can leave a comment there or you could call us leave us a voicemail we'd be happy to play it on the show 361 col talks at 361-265-8255 and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback let us know your thoughts see if you agree do you have a rant that we haven't had a nerve of um Basically, in social media, just type in Comes Out Loud and you'll find us in there. Um, uh, if you want to join us on Telegram, uh, so I'm not quite sure what we could do about fixing this. So we used to have a, a, a short link to get into the Telegram chat for Comes Out Loud Drag Race, but it's no longer working and I can't figure out how to replace it. So just if you use the Telegram platform, which is basically like Facebook Messenger, but better and more secure, um, just type in Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, or sorry, C-O-L Drag Race, uh, to search and find us on there for our little group that chats. Um, if you want to see what's happening in terms of events, you can go to bit.ly backslash calendar dash C-O-L. That's bit.ly. Um, if you want to know when we're going to be doing uh, various recordings, especially the ones that go live to YouTube, if you wouldn't want to support us, there's several ways you can do that. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And you can make a purchase or two or three or more. And there are several things that you can get there. Uh, obviously, we have apparel. Damon and I are wearing different versions of shirts that we have. Um, mine happens to be the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo with the crown, which matches the lovely mug that Damon is demonstrating right now. Wow. Um, we also have the Drag Pride um, shirt, can send us my foreplay uh, design style, several things on there. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can also go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for a dollar a month or more. You can be a patron. And uh, the big thing is that you get to listen to the pre and post shows. Uh, so you get full unedited versions of these episodes. Or if you just, <laughs> if you want to um, give us a tip, you could do that. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and you can just give us a one-time donation. Help keep the lights on, as they say. And when it comes to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, it is its own podcast feed. So basically anywhere that you get a podcast, you can uh, download the audio version or you can go to comes out loud on youtube and we have a whole playlist of nothing but c-o-l-d-r and uh there's well over 100 episodes of this dang show that we've been doing um speaking of the 200th anniversary damon and i have a special one coming up soon uh so yeah we've been doing this for a while <laughs> damon if they want to get in touch with you where would they find you um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most very related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm-hmm. 
If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. I do have a specific Twitter account I created to keep all the spoilers away, and that's Gabber73DRAG. So anything that is Drag Race is basically shunted into that profile on purpose. Everything else is blocked so I don't get spoiled. And even then, some of you motherfuckers I follow on Twitter like post random <laughs> shit every once in a while, and I'm like, what? And I'm like, ugh. Anyways. Oh. So with that being said, uh, that would be the end of this episode, but we will see you again soon as we discuss the next couple of episodes coming up. Bye bye. <laughs>so okay i think i know what it might be but i just have to figure it out okay for drag race um what do you mean like the link what it can be oh okay um